I think, you know, as a, as a clinician, the first thing is, is that there are two main side effects from CAR T cells. The first is cytokine release syndrome, and the second is neurotoxicity. It's interesting because at first, people lumped the two together and thought they were the same entity. And now it's become more apparent that they're probably two distinct entities. Sometimes they can overlap a little bit in time, but neurotoxicity tends to happen after cytokine release syndrome. Um, maybe around the same time, but then it, it, it can also be occur even after cytokine release syndrome has has resolved. And uh, you know the clinical manifestations can be diverse. It can be um, encephalopathy, uh, expressive aphasia, meaning difficulty speaking, um, seizures, myoclonus or abnormal movements, hallucinations. So it it can be quite diverse, and you know sometimes. Uh, distressing for, for patients and families. So I think that many people have been trying to get a better understanding of it and how to manage it, of course. One thing that we learned is that some of the interventions that are used for cytokine release syndrome um, in the United States, uh, to tocilizumab, um, which is uh, an anti-IL-6 receptor blocker, is FDA approved for the management of cytokine release syndrome. That doesn't appear to help neurotoxicity. Uh, so currently, we really just do supportive care and we use corticosteroids um, to try and uh, tamp down the symptoms. It's unclear to me and others whether how much the steroids actually help reverse the process. Sometimes after steroids start, it takes a few days for the neurotoxicity to resolve. But fortunately, it does appear to resolve and patients, you know, they come through the process at, you know, at the end, um, recovered, so so that much is fortunate. But I think we're still trying to understand the pathophysiology, and if there's a way that we can even prevent it from occurring in the first place.